All right. Welcome each and every one of you to this Thursday night's uh, edition of Southern Woods and Waters. And boy, does that weather feel good out there or not? I mean, it's not too hot. And as you can tell, I'm a little redder today. I spent the day fishing out on Cheatham Lake today and, and didn't do as well as I wanted to, but I had a great time doing what I did. <laughs> so if it had to do with fishing, I enjoyed it because uh, I was out there. I, I will say, I, I do have to tell you one thing. Um, big time, I want to go ahead and say, that we are, have given away, and I wanted to mention her name right quick because I told her I would mention it right off the bat. But as you know, if you went to Southern Woods and Waters website, uh, if you've been clicking on that, we are giving away a brand new pair of amphibia sunglasses. And you're going to love these. Uh, but starting after tonight, starting tomorrow, you can go in there and register again to win the next pair that we're going to be giving away in six more weeks. But this six-week winner is Miss Nola Williford from Adairville, Kentucky. Uh, she is our proud winner and already contacted her and she was ecstatic about winning and we're so pleased that she did. She's a great, great lady up there in Adairville, Kentucky. And uh, Miss Williford will be sending this out to you. And let me tell you something, they were great today. Uh, they saved my eye today. I uh, had a fish that came up, spit the hook out. It came right back at my eye. Um, my glasses were on, and it glanced off my, my amphibia sunglasses. Didn't scratch them, didn't do anything, but it glanced off and caught my ear. The crankbait caught me in the ear, and, and I was fishing by myself. Uh, that's a little tough to get out of your ear whenever you buy yourself no mirrors no anything so great great job though we appreciate it miss nola williford we're thankful for you hey tonight we have a great great show for you lined up we have <clears throat> excuse me we have tj stallings tj stallings is with the blakemore tti blakemore is up underneath the the umbrella of tti and uh -huh. uh, along with a bunch of others daiichi uh roadrunner yeah, we're, all we're like those a, so thank you for coming on tj yeah we're like a redneck general motors <laughs> yeah that's it a redneck general motors that's it but i'm gonna tell you something tonight we're gonna talk about a few things mainly the the business end of our fishing uh, your line is great, your rods, your reels, those are all important, but the hook is what you have to drive home each and every time and able to get that fish from point A to your boat. Uh, the hook is one of the most vital parts of your fishing equipment. And I don't believe that many people spend enough time uh, involved in, in picking out the right hook for the job. Exactly. And what you've done, you and I talked, uh, TJ and I talked before the show, for the last 22 years, you've been doing studies on these hooks. Yep. And so you bring a wealth of knowledge about that. And we're going to tap into that on the second segment. And we're also going to ask him about the bleeding Daiichi hooks and the bleeding hooks and why, what brought it on, uh, all the different things that he's found out. So uh, first off, I'm gonna let him tell you though, who is TTI and what does it mean? Well, TTI is True Turn Industries. That's what the company was. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, True Turn hooks were invented by my, the owner's dad back in 1959. Right. And uh, it was one of those deals where, where he was uh, at the, in the Air Force and the infant computers back then used punch cards. I mean, the easy way to make the sorter work faster was to use bent paper clips. And he missed a fish, and remembered playing with the, with the paper clip how it turned towards pressure, and he bent a hook. I'll be. And that's how the true turn hook was invented. Uh, we got time for a close up? Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Let's got, get this one right We were there. smart enough to get one out, out ahead of time here. I put one right here in the light. This is a yeah, blood, let's see if blood we can red. see that one right can there. Can you see that good, buddy? Let's see that one right there. Every time you touch it, it uh, let me hold. Let me hold it. You got it. Yeah, let me hold it. It'll be a lot better. You may if, want to hold it against that. Paper. I'm gonna hold it right like this. Can we see it real good right there? But you can see that cam right there. Yeah, the the you see that. All now, right. You see it. Yeah, but you see the turn. You see the crook in it. Right. See that crook in there. It always rotates towards pressure, and it, it will turn either direction. And that's. And, and I'm going to tell you, I used them back in the 70s when I first started off on Lake Sam Rayburn 
fishing uh, the true turn hooks. Uh -huh. I use them a, a lot, and they do the business. They sure do. They drive they sure it home, do. and just a great, great hook. Uh, real sturdy too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big time sturdy. So tell us a little. All right. So that's how it began was True Turn right. uh, Industries. Right. And then um, back in I'm going to say it was ninety or ninety one. Uh, Daiichi King Shung mm -hmm. from Japan. Mm -hmm. that Daiichi means number one right. in Japanese. So there's a Daiichi bank. There's a Daiichi termite control mm -hmm. in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came to us and said, we like the way you package your product. We like the way you, you help your dealers. And they said, why don't you sell Daiichis in the United States? And, and that's what started the... That's the, what, the, what started Daiichi. The Daiichi part of it. Right. Sure and then yeah. Roadrunner... Has it been a staple for... That was invented in 1958, the year I before say, True Turn. It, yeah. Everybody's got a roadrunner. Oh, yeah. If you're a fisherman and been fishing for any length of time, you've got a roadrunner. Oh, yeah. Uh, we shipped... Uh, this is crazy. Whether it's tied or six heads to a package or however you want to configure it. Right. We shipped 1.3 million roadrunners this year. One po Already this year? Yes. Goodness. I think somebody's rubber. catching fish on them. Somebody's got to be catching fish on them. That or they're chumming with them on the other. But they know no limitations. The, that's the thing I like about road runners. They don't, they don't know a limitation. You, you can throw the same thing in Canada that you can in Florida exactly. and catch fish. Exactly. And, and so, you know, a lot of baits are made regionally. Uh, yeah. This bait will work here in the south part of uh, the United States and this bait will work great in the northern part of the United States. Roadrunner works no matter where you go. That's true and we bought it uh, Roadrunner back in 2004 and uh, it was the uh, owner's son sold it to us. He wanted to see it go on of course because right. it was a family business and, right. and uh, he loved to fish and wanted people to keep catching fish on the Roadrunner so he wanted us to buy it so we ended up buying it and and to be honest with you uh, it, was, it was time for some fresh thoughts you're right you know you bring more heads in and more things happen and and we've probably doubled the offerings in roadrunner in the last six years since we've owned it well jimmy houston's been a great uh <laughs> ambassador for roadrunner for a number of years i was on the phone with him for about 20 minutes today he, he's sure. awesome he comes yeah. up here a lot to, yeah, to sure the does. nashville area and, and he loves nashville and sure we, just, we all love jimmy too uh, he just does a great job anywhere he goes. But oh, yeah. he's he's always talked highly about it. And then I noticed you got Randy Howell on here talking about a few other kinds of heads, the, mainly that... that uh, uh, the Rolling Runner. The Rolling Runner, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's been a great-looking bait. And I used it today, and uh -huh. that's an awesome-looking bait. Yeah, and when we went with the willow blades so they get down to right. those deeper spots and smallies that are in, in the this below the thermoclines. Uh, it was actually Aaron Martins that... that came up with that concept of fishing it deep oh, for, yeah. for spots and smallies. And uh, we actually have an Aaron Martin version too. That's awesome. Hey, we, I tell you what, TJ, we got to take a break. When we come back, we're going to ask him why red hooks and, and what's the big deal about the red, okay? So we're going to talk to him just a little bit more about that. So hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company where setting the hook is an everyday thing. This segment is being brought to you by Fate Sanders Marina. Come by and check out the jewel of Percy Priest Lake. All right, this week's Picture of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Deer Processing. Hey, it is already halfway through August, so September 1st, starts Kentucky deer season, so bring your deer over there to Flowers Deer Processing off of Eaton's Creek Road, and they will properly take care of your deer, and I promise you, you will not have any regrets. Our first picture here, this is Zachary Steinke's bass. He, he sent this in to me, and Zachary, congratulations, that is a good looking little bass. And I promise that uh, you just made a, a, a fellow bass fisherman right there. That's the way to do it right there. Our next picture here, this is from Chris Lauderdale, a friend of ours. This is a chair that they built for the Veterans Hunt giveaway. Um, this is totally four-wheel drive. Cool. It is for some lucky uh, guy that, that loves to hunt, but he doesn't feel like he can get around in the outdoors. Well, guess what? With this thing, you go up and down those ridges, no problem. 
and this is a great, great thing that they do out there. That's Per Mobile is the name of the company. And thank you very much for that, Chris. And from Wes Sneed, Wes just said, Hugh, my little buddy has done it again. This is Mason Warner. He's age 11 years old from Shelbyville, Tennessee. He caught this 5.30 pound largemouth on a shaky head using the Sneed product, Shaky Worm. He won the first place big fish in his tournament Friday night, August 10th. And by the way, Hugh, Mason is the newest member of the Sneed product fishing team. He will be wearing a jersey and supporting Sneed products, BB Lures, Southern Woods and Waters, and All Pro Rods and Punisher Lures. Congratulations to Mason Warner. Look at the smile on that little kid. That boy is going to be, when he grows up, we're going to all shake in our boots when he comes to the tournament. Hey, you can send your pictures to us here at Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robinson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee. 37219 or simply email to me at hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We'll get them on here really, really fast. Got a lot of them coming in. A lot of tournament stuff is coming in too, so keep them coming. We're going to show them just as fast as we can, but uh, we appreciate everybody sending those pictures. All right, tell us a little bit, uh, TJ. We have TJ Stones with TTI, the umbrella uh, company with Blakemore, Roadrunner, Daiichi, all those under it. Uh, tell us about the Red Hooks. Well, it started simply enough. I was about 19 years old, and I was working in my dad's tackle shop. I wasn't born this way. No, okay. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, anyway, he said, come here, dummy. And I knew he was talking to me because my brother was at lunch. <laughs> and I went to the bait tank in the back of the store, and he lowered different colored jig heads into the, into the minnows. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what he was doing. I said, what are you doing? He told me, shut up. Watch. White, yellow, pink, orange, all good colors. Right. Lowered them in the water. I didn't know what his point was. Right. Dark red. You couldn't see the jig from the minutes chewing on it. Oh, my goodness. And then he reached over and grabbed a red and white float, you know, the kind you shouldn't right. use, and threw it in the tank. And the minutes went to the bottom of that bobber and moved it around the tank. So that started my can of worms on studying fish. Mm -hmm. I was already driving a bait truck, delivering minnows to other bait shops. Right. So I had to understand how to care for them. Right. And then uh, we were culprit's first dealer. Culprit worms. Culprit worms. And they had the first laminated worm. Right. Rodney Dan. And the color number two is red shad. That's right. Still the best selling color in Florida. Oh yeah. For good reason. You could throw that worm in the bait tank. Even the shiners, which are vegetarians, would chew on the red side and not the black side. And of course, Pretty we amazing. used red jig heads. We oh, paid yeah. our uh, bullet weights red. Uh huh. And it got to the point where I couldn't be the test dummy anymore when I had somebody with me because they knew the deal. Right. So I was constantly the test dummy and being overfished or under, you know, being right. the be the odd man out. But it was, you know, we were doing we were studying, mm -hmm. fishing mm -hmm. studies. Mm -hmm. And then uh, years later, uh, we, we showed it to Tom Mann. And Tom went back to his store, which had a, a giant aquarium. Right. Fat Albert, the big bass in the mm -hmm. tank. He would light a cigarette and walk up and down the tank, and the fish would follow it. Just from that red glow on the, the cigarette. The red glow on the cigarette. There was something to it. And we knew it had to be blood injury. Right. Because you could take a minnow and scratch it, throw it in the tank, and they'd... Tear it, it was like they were like piranha right well I, we just kept doing the fishing study thing and I, I became a rep for uh, back then true turn incorporated TTI mm -hmm. and um, I told him about it back in 99 and he said prove it so we did a trot line study with equal numbers of gold and bronze and red hooks red hooks were already out there the walleye fishermen figured out they liked red hooks but they didn't know why Right. Okay. Just right. like back then, crappie fishermen would only use a gold hook. They didn't know why, but that's what they, you know, it was like, it's like wearing a hat. You got to wear a hat when you fish. That's it's right. It's unlit written law. That's right. So anyway, we did these trot line studies and, you know, the red outfished the golden bronze. Mm -hmm. And then I got a, a student from Auburn, which is a, they have a big fisheries mm -hmm. aquaculture sure mm -hmm. school there. And uh, the kid was a lot smarter than I was. And I'd been studying marine biology by then you know about 21 years 
And uh, he said, we're going to do it this way. I'm just like, whatever you say, sir. Hey, you know, you're in charge. Mm -hmm. And he put that trot line out parallel to the shoreline. Again, equal numbers of gold or bronze or red hooks. And he even cut the Vienna sausages that he used for bait with a ruler. Okay? Just to make sure. Just to make sure. Then the next day, after 24 hours, by the watch, did a creel count, then turned that trot line 90 degrees. I said, what are we doing? He said, well, there's more sun here than in the afternoon than here. Okay. Yeah, I said, I guess we're going to do this four days. He said, yes, we are. Four days in a row, red outfish, gold, and bronze combined. No combined? Human, combined. No human involvement. That's amazing. It's blood injury. It just They can't help it. And then about uh, three years after we introduced bleeding bait, I was on the flats down in Florida, sight casting redfish, which mm -hmm. if you have it done, you need to try. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. It ain't nothing like cast. It's like hunting and fishing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'd rather, I'd, well, I'd rather do that and eat. That's right, it. that's right. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> we get out there and I was nose hooking some uh, like shad assassin baits. Right. The old finesse shad, matter mm -hmm. of fact. Just nose hooking with a hitchhiker on the front. We call it stupid rigging. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine brought that to me and we gave it a try. And before the grass got high on the flat, it was in February, I watched redfish travel further on the flat to eat that bait than ever before. And I said, okay, that looks like a gill. Mm -hmm. And I called one of my biology buddies. He said, you skipped a lot of classes, didn't you? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you don't remember gill flash? That's right. Ah, okay, when fish feed, they flare the gills. They flare the more gills. blood. Mm -hmm. And the gills from it, just like any other muscle, you that's move right. it, there's more blood in it. That's right. And that's a signal, sight signal, time to eat. I'm at the buffet, you're not. Hey, you may not want an ice cream cone, but if you saw me sitting there, hit, sitting here eating one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to arm wrestle you for it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And it's the same thing with fish. So there's two signals. Further out, it's gill flash. And when they get there... It's the bleeding injury. It's the injury. The bait shouldn't be red. The hook should be red. And it's hard to miss fish when they hit the hook. Oh, yeah. That's true. And that's how bleeding bait started and what we've learned so far. And you've got, you've got all the hooks are in different scenarios. I mean, we've got uh, swim bait looking hooks. Oh, yeah. Uh, wide gaps. I love this one right here. And this is the, the big, huge... Uh, circle hook mm -hmm. for cat for for cat fishing uh and, and y'all are really part team catfish yeah on, on on this hook right here if can you get see that that is an awesome looking hook there you go and you really don't have to set the hook with these i oh, mean no. when a fish grabs it it automatically just gets in the corner if you can see it's in the corner mm -hmm. every single time yep even if they grab it like this and any pressure is applied, it just turns right into the corner. It slides and finds an angle change. Yeah. That's why you don't set a hook. What happens is when fish eat, they're worried about competition, just like you fight me for that ice cream right. we were talking about. All right. They do that turn. They do a turn. That's they right. They do a turn. They're looking for fact, that next, next lunch. Another or... study. The fastest turn on fish is smallies and peacock bass. There are no two fish that turn faster than those two fish. I can believe that. And and that's why I came up with a circle hook for wacky rigging. Okay. So that make, see up there in the Champagne Lakes, they're catching 25, 26 smallies a day. Well, if 10% were gut hooked, that would be a bad thing. That's right. So I came up with a circle hook for wacky rigging up there so that all those fish would go back in the water. And that's you'll miss your first fish because you'll set the hook. Right. Okay. And then from there on, your hookup ratio is about 92, 93%. And, and hook. so you're using circle hooks for wacky rigging. Absolutely. That's a great, great idea. And you're right. There's no gut hook into it. Nope. Nope. It's it's the deeper you hook a fish, the higher the release uh, mortality is. Right. Right. And that's why we like to use circle hooks wherever we can. Well, I tell you what, they're they're great. They do an awesome job, and and that the circle hooks look great. And the true turns, you got the true turns to where, man, when they any product any part of the pressure that hook's going in the meat again that hook there is good for catch and release it's better for panfish a circle hook really for flounder and panfish really not worth a darn mm -hmm. and that's why you need a, a true turn hook because it hooks up quicker and and your your both your fluke and your flounder they're not big on that turn they'll eat and rest 
Right. And even your flathead catfish, they tend to eat and stop with a with a and with a circle hook, that's not good. And what you have to do is do a slow sweep of the rod, I mean about that speed, to slide that hook for them to hook them. Okay. okay. There's a lot that we we think a lot about hooks as you can tell. I, I can tell. Um I like the one that you've got over here, uh, rigged on the on the fluke over here. Uh, the one that's got the those, the bait keeper on it. And talk to me a little bit about that one because right off the bat, when you showed it to me, I said that's a better hook setting hook. You're absolutely right. And why is that though? Okay. Um, I, well, the funny thing about this this bait right here, a mm -hmm. lot of people call it a fluke. Right. Actually, it was the Shad Assassin. Right. The, was, the, the, was first, the first one. Was the you're first. exactly right. And ironically, my dad was his first dealer. They were. Well, I'll be. Him and the guy from Culprit were buddies and partners. And they, one bought the other out, and the other one started Bass Assassin. And uh, that guy, Gordon, sold it to Robin up there in Mayo and, and Robin's the one that came up with this bait, this first shad shaped bait. All right, well hold on to it. We've got to do our product of the week right now, Andrew's telling me, so hold on to that. All right. We're gonna show that here in just a minute, but first we gotta do our product of the week. This week's product of the week is being brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service Center. We sell tires for the way you drive. All right, the one that I want to show that I'm really impressed with a lot, and, and of course, Roadrunner has, has made lots of these, but I got to tell you, the coloration on these heads now and, and the little willow blade on here is going to make a huge, huge difference. This is their new Marabou Pro uh, 2.0, and it's got a little bit of chartreuse up here on the head. Great, great bait, I think, for Kentuckys, especially if yeah. you're on those bluffs. But it'll catch largemouth, it'll catch smallmouth, mm -hmm. Kentuckys, uh, crappie, uh, uh, any, just about anything that likes shed. And this is going to, and what I like about marabou is marabou like, is like living in mm -hmm. the water. I mean, you can just pulse that. This will actually flare and keep going cylindrical or further back, then flare again. Yep. And that just makes it more lifelike. So great, great job that they've done on this. And Roadrunner, of course, is, is a staple for anybody's tackle box. So let's take our another break right quick. And when we come back, we're going to open up our phone lines. So be ready to call us, 737-7767. And we're going to be talking more about hooks. So hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Water. This segment is being brought to you by Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, welcome back everyone. You can call us here at 737-7767 for all, any of your questions you may have. But I want to get back with TJ first off. We talked about the different way to set the hooks and why hook setting is so important. And people don't, I think, don't give it enough thought. Yeah. They really don't. Uh, my buddy uses this and he catches fish, so I'll use it too, but your buddy might not be doing the right thing either. Yeah. Uh, so I think a lot of it has to do with, with the way a, a hook is positioned in the yeah. bait, plus how the pressure is applied to it from the pull. Yeah. Um, help us out a little bit, TJ. Well, a lot of it is, is hook selection first. That's, and, and a lot of people think, well, this has got a big gap in it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let you hold it. Yeah, since this was a, a wide gap hook. Right. And if you see it right there, all right, there everybody sees the big wide gap here. And then what they're doing what they call skin hooking on on uh, shad assassins or flukes. I'm gonna hand that to you since you're in the camera zone. Right. There. Just and, like that. And you can see it. There's the the head of it's right here in the front, and then it's just skin hooked right back here in the back. If you can see that, yeah. And a lot of people will push it back through, you know, and start that, that right. hole through the plastic, which is a good idea, and I, I do that myself. Mm -hmm. And then here's another way to do it. This is called a copperhead hook. And, and I it, like that. Oh, yeah. Now, if you'll hand me the other one again, I'm mm -hmm. going to show you what happens. I did this study with the X-point hook, which penetrates seven times faster than Daiichi. Really? Yes. I, I forgot to bring one with me today, but 
What happens with this bait? I'd, I'd lost, I lost some fish on that X point hook, and it made me think I ought to do a, a study on it. Right. So I did a study and, and kept a chart and put it in Excel and all that other fun stuff like you're supposed to. And then it, it just got to me that, that the hookup ratio was so much better with the hook that you're holding there, the copperhead, right. versus the, what everybody's buying. Mm -hmm. And even though that hook penetrates seven times faster, and it all boiled down to the geometry. I mean, that's, that's, right. that's yeah. what it really boiled down to. And if you let me see that one, what happens is is a fish will crush a bait and kill it as right. it's swimming. That helps you, you know, get a hook up. That's obviously. right. Obviously, and what I found out, and a, a biologist call it compression. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What which means the fish bit it. Right. Okay. <laughs> and if you look, I'm gonna let you hold it once one okay. one up and then the other up. That hook is pointing towards flesh. And then the other one in your hand there, with that fat gap style hook, is pointing towards plastic. It sure is. That's the difference. And if you turn them upside down, there you go. It's the front of the bait that prevents the hook up. And that bend on the front of the, of the copperhead hook is what helps the hook Yeah, up. and it's totally out of the way. Right, exactly. It's totally out of the way. I can see that, the, the, and, he, and it does make lots of sense. That one is pointed towards the eye of the hook, and it's pointed towards the plastic. So that one right here. Hey, we got some calls, TJ, we got to take care of. All right. And we got Gary. Gary, how can we help you? I mean, Gib, Gib, how can we help you? Hey, Hugh, how you doing? We're doing great, Gib. Well, it's good to meet you the other day. Well, thank you very much. Good to meet you. And, and uh, you doing, uh, did you have a question for us? Yes, I uh, uh, actually went to uh, Lake Gaston, North Carolina, my cousin's 50th birthday. Um, bass had locked, y'all. Boat broke down. Oh, no. <laughs> but uh, we did a little catfishing uh, using circle hooks. Yes. With uh, live brim and caught a 43-pound channel cat. And uh, actually, we had the rod sitting on uh, uh, his dock. And uh, we were doing a little birthday party and looked over and the rod was bent over and uh, <laughs> got <a> lucky. <laughs> well, Gib, that's, a, that's usually how it happens, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good fun, but uh, Circle Hook uh, uh, did the job. Well, we appreciate it, right. Gib, and thank you so much. And also, it was nice to meet you the other day, and we look forward to – hey, send us that picture. We'd like to see that catfish. All right, buddy, I will. Thank you, Gib. And we got – Dan, Dan, how can we help you tonight? Uh, thanks for taking my call. Here. Sure. Uh, I like the crappie fish, and I was just wondering uh, what kind of hooks he would have for like small grubs. Well, it depends on the crappie. Um, I would probably start at a two turn four, and if I miss fish, then I would go to a two. Okay, start off with a four. Right. Uh, and then go to a two. I sure would. All right. And you mean you mean little white grubs? Like little maggot-looking critters, or are you talking about plastics? Are you talking about the little the little grubs, or just just regular grubs like, uh, like tube baits and stuff? Right, tube baits, regular grubs. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. I it, misunderstood you. I thought we we're talking critters. No. Uh, okay. That being said, um, uh, do you want to go with a hook, or do you want to go with a jig? Uh, the hook. The hook. Just, just a hook. Okay. Uh, with tubes, it's going to be pretty hard to keep a tube on a, on a hook because there's nothing really to hold a tube. Um, your best bet would be a solid body grub. And uh, okay. th there's a lot of them that look like tubes that are solid body and they last longer. And I would probably go to a two. And uh, here again, if you miss fish with a tube, or a solid body tube, I should say, then I would go up to a one. All right. All right. Well, we hope that helps you. Sure did. Thank you. Th Good thank fishing. you, Daniel. And Robert, Robert, how can we help you tonight? Oh uh, yes, sir. I was wondering where I could find the uh, willow leaf blades for the Blakemore Road Runners. I'm having a real hard time finding them anywhere. And I'll hang up listen to you. Thank you, sir. Okay, if you want to, um, Bass Pro Shop carries what they call the Pro Series Head. It comes in a yellow package, and it's a the 16th comes. Gosh, I hope you don't quote me. The 16th comes with a four instead of a size six hook. Okay. So it's a little bit better for crappie and a little bit better for spots. And then, of course, the, the eighth comes with a normal one, size one hook. Right. And uh, it comes with a willow blade. It's called the Pro Series okay. Heads. And then there's another one called a Pro 2.0 Head, and it's that head. 
right. without the marabou. Okay. And it's a black nickel hook. Obviously, I prefer the one with the billion made hook, but. Well, now, mm. no, no, also, is there a, a way that they can go on the website, though, and order just the blades no. for anything? No. You got a, no. It comes in a package, right? Everything's right. packaged. They're ready to go, and you can buy the heads. I think there's like 11 heads to a pack. Okay. Or nine. I'm not in sales. I just dream the stuff up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, but you can buy all the heads you want. And what's nice about those heads is they come with a barb. So if you fish a tube, you can push that tube on over that barb and then turn it a little bit so it's got fresh meat on the tube. Right. And it'll stay and it'll hang stay on there. there. But if it's a solid body, you can just knock that barb off with a pair of pliers and then use your solid body. And all that right. collar will hold that plastic. All right. And David, David, how can we help you tonight? Uh, Hugh, how you doing, bud? We're doing great, David. Got a bass fishing question. Okay. Uh, on my uh, Texas rig and on my worms, lizard, bush hogs, of course, I use a lot of red hook. Right. Good. Do you see an advantage or disadvantage to using a red tungsten weight with that red hook or a black tungsten weight using a red bead? about the tween that comes to weight in the hook. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer that with a question. Do you want me to hit the weight or do you want me to hit the hook? The weight. You want the fish to hit the weight, not the hook. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is the weight. <laughs> I yeah, tricked you up, didn't I? It's an attractor, the red bead. Yeah. yeah. I, honestly, I would stay with just the red hook. In fact, I threw away a lot of red baits when I finally figured out the hook should be that color. Because that's the, 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 uh, that's the flare of the gill. Right, and they're going to hit that blood injury. I want them to hit the hook, not the bait. Okay. Now, uh, you know, uh, like a crawdad with, with black with a little red fleck, that's okay. I don't go for much at over 10% red in the bait Okay. versus the hook because I really want them to zero in on the hook. All and right. that's just me. Um, as far as the, um, uh, are you Carolina rigging? Is that why you're using the bead or are you using the bead to protect the knot? I'm just, I, I, I'm more or less using that bead as a more of an attractant. And see, I use a tungsten, but I use a bead because I use a lot of crawfish type soft right, plastics. Right, you want that click. I want that click noise. Yeah, yeah. And it, uh, and it does protect the knot. Right. Uh, but you're right, though. Now that I think about it, I don't have red, but that's a good thing. Use the red hooks. Right. And then you got them. You got them concentrating on the red, right? Because they're going to hit blood injury. In fact, it's so it's it matters so much. I had two friends that filmed the show, and they were fishing identical baits. One had a bleeding bait treble on the front, and one had it on the back on the crankbait, and they swapped when they could remember. Mm -hmm. They got their thirty smallies. Twenty-eight of them were on the red hook. The red hook, right? Absolutely. So that's awesome. So that's I mean it, it really matters. It All really right. Does. Well, we hope that helps you. Good fishing. All right, you. Thank, Thank you, Dave. Thank you. And Jerry, Jerry, how can we help you tonight? Uh, yeah, you. This is Jerry Kent up in Warren County. Yes, sir. I've been fishing Center Hill Lake for forty some years, and uh, and we uh, we've been setting out a trot line, and we caught probably one hundred and fifty better pounds the last few days. All right. Awesome. And uh, catching a few good bass on buzz bait and catch one now and then out of the junk. They ought to be headed towards the creeks right about now, shouldn't they? Yes, sir. They're in the head of Pine Creek where I've been fishing. I know the place well. Know the place well. But uh, are, I, caught, are I caught one flathead on the trot line tonight, 40 pounds. Good. That is awesome. Now, hey, do you use circle hooks for that? Yes, sir. All right. Have you thought about using the red ones? Well, yes, sir. I tell you what, I'm going to try them, and, and and I've got a brother-in-law that is the world champion jugger, catfish wow. jugger. Wow. Uh, Scott Kimberly, and uh, he's won it like two or three years in a row. He's the catfish jugging champion. We're going to get him red. All right. And see if he can't even blow away the competition even more than he already is. He should do his own. <laughs> well, he's got a pattern down. He may want to try, you know, try his own study. That's right. Convince himself first. All right. Well, we hope that helps you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. We got to do now our tip of the week. 
This week's tip of the week is being brought to you by Interstate Batteries of Music City, located at 3729 Highway 109 North in Lebanon, Tennessee, home of your alternative power source. All right. I have got a great tip for, for you tonight, for especially now, this is for those tournament fishermen, whether you're tournament bass fishing, tournament crappie fishing, or tournament cat fishing, this tip is gonna help you out tremendously. How many times have you been out there and you catch it and, and you hook one, and maybe a gill plate uh, gets snagged in the hook, mm -hmm. or something like that, and it causes bleeding. Well, bleeding is not good, we all know that, and we want that if we want to keep that fish for a check-in or a tournament, we, might, we need to try and keep it as live as long as possible. Here's a great tip. Carry you either a Pepsi or a Mountain Dew. Carry it in a can, and anytime you have a bleeding fish, pour a little bit of Pepsi down their throat or a little bit of uh, Mountain Dew down their throat, it stops the bleeding instantaneously. Learn that great tip from Chris Snow and also from John Hopkins, we call him Hoppy, out there at Fate Sanders. They both told me that tip and wanted me to share that with you. So if you got a bleeding fish, use either Pepsi or a Mountain Dew will stop the bleeding. I'll be darned. Isn't that something? Hey, we got, uh, that's be all of our tip. Next segment, boy, Joy has went and done it again. And while she was doing her nails, I had to do the recipe of the week. And if Andy Jeanette tells you that I was making the recipe of the week, you can tell him I said, no, I was not doing it. So I appreciate it. But hurry back with more of Southern Woods and Waters and be ready to watch this recipe. This segment is being brought to you by Advanced Chiropractic, where we help America feel great one spine at a time. This week's recipe of the week is being brought to you by Broker Headquarters Group. Let our team in camo help you with all of your real estate needs. All right, boys, and she's done it again. Now, now, she did this one off of that Pinterest. Pinterest is where she originally got this one. So if your gal is like my gal and can't get off of Pinterest, you might need to use it to your advantage, guys, and get some of these recipes. But Joy, this is this one I did because you were getting your nails done, but I threw I just threw it together. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna talk to us about it? I am. I'm gonna tell everybody what it is. What you is made it. it. And it's fruity. Not fruity. Fruity. Hughes Fruity Frozen Mixed Berry Dip. <laughs> That's not How what about it's that? called. <laughs> it is now. It is not. It is now. She it is. going to get back at me. <laughs> yeah. It is really easy to do. And I did get it off of Pinterest. And everybody ought to go check that out and look me on there. I've got a ton of recipes on there. And they're really good. But this one has a frozen mixed berries. And we used raspberries and strawberries and a few blueberries. A few we didn't put too many blueberries in it because we didn't want it to be blue. And it has a tub of Cool Whip, low fat, light, right. uh, no fat yogurt, and it has pudding mix, a cheesecake instant pudding mix. Mix all of that together, keep it chilled, and we're serving it with uh, sugar-free sugar cookies. Does that make sense? No. Well. It is. That's what it is. And don't forget, if you want to save $5 and go to Famous Dave's and have some of the best food in the world, please do. And it's on Hugh's website at southernwoodsandwaters.com. And the kids contest, the coloring contest, Hugh didn't announce that, but we have a winner that's being picked tonight by Phil, Phil, our wonderful webmaster, and Dr. Fisher. Thank you so much. Hugh has been testing his sugar and everything. He's still losing weight. He's weighing every day. She sees him all the time. And you're just doing so good, Hugh. I'm proud of you. Thank you. But I pass that dip over no. here and I'll show you how to blow a, blow a diet. <laughs> i tell you what, this is all I can do to make it DJ without eating it. <laughs> it does look good. It does look good. How you can catch that recipe along with many, many others on our website at Southern Woods woodsandwaters.com and go to the recipe section and she will have it on there tomorrow morning for sure. All right. Thank you, Miss Joy. We appreciate that. TJ, 
Yeah, man. Talking about uh, um, some of the hooks and everything, but we have an announcement yep. on a brand new bait that I'm excited about, and it's it's a multi blade, a multi bait, yep. but it's not the Alabama rig and it's not the Tennessee rig, but this is actually a rig that I think will load your boat for you. I believe so. I believe and so. Can you show? Let's show everybody. We've been waiting till the last to show this because we, you know we always save the last, the best for last. But let me hold it for you. This is called the buffet rig, and if you look at it, you just simply pull, touch your line up here, and TJ, I was out on Cheatham today. This is the size of the shad that are in the big balls of uh, uh, bait out there, they are no longer than this. Yeah. And that is what mo the majority of the fish are feeding on, regardless of whether you're talking about crappie, bass, uh, red eye, catfish, they're all eating this size bait right now. Right. Elephants eat peanuts. Oh yeah. Elephants eat peanuts. That's a great scenario. <laughs> That's a great thing right there. Elephants do eat peanuts. We got a 16 and a half pound replica bass in our office right now that was caught on a 16th ounce Roadrunner. Isn't that something? Elephants eat peanuts. They do. But this, when they tell you to match the hatch, uh, that's all you ever hear in every book I've ever read about fishing, bass fishing, whether it be bass fishing, cat fishing, trout fishing, match the hatch, match the hatch. Yep. Well, if you're throwing a, uh, I, I hate to say it, but if you're throwing a great big crankbait and all the, the shad are a third the size, yeah. uh, you know, you're kind of defeating the purpose. I think you could catch a lot more if you would just go the same size as the bait. Smaller bait fish are easier to catch. That's right. Minnows, shad, whatever, they close their mouths to, to make a quick run, mm -hmm. but they have to stop to breathe. And a small minnow or a small shad will go that far right. and stop, whereas a bigger bait could go that far. And go fish know that smaller fish are easy to catch. See, that's what we need. Now say it again because I want our viewers to hear that. The smaller the bait, the smaller the bait, the easier it is for fish to catch. Because be small fish, a small bait fish, will close their mouths to, to gain speed. Right. And but they've got to breathe. So they'll go maybe that far. You'll see minnows do this and yeah. stop. They're breathing. Well, I'll be. Even giant tuna. You know when you get a chance to turn them on that stop when they stop on that first run. You know why they stop? To breathe. <laughs> to breathe, because they close their mouths to gain speed. And a tuna is a little missile. <laughs> no, a big he, missile. He want, a big missile when he <laughs> right. wants to be. Right. Uh, and, and now, now bass, they will run. I've seen bass run these shad long ways. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, but it's not the same one because they flare off and then they're just after the whole school. Right, right. Uh, well, and they had, run them out. If you had to catch a rabbit to eat, All would right. you rather, ch rather chase two or three of them or just one? Two or three. There you go. <laughs> awesome. All there right. There you go. All right. Hey, I tell you what, we're going to have the giveaway tonight, and uh, what we're going to have is Blakemore and TTI has graciously gave us a $50 package for your uh, crappie, catfish, and panfish right. uh, package. So be the fifth caller at 737-7767. We're going to get you ready for doing a little catfishing, crappie fishing, and pan fishing. And right now, hurry back with more of Southern Woods and Water. This calendar of the week is being brought to you by Drycon Carpet Cleaning. Give us a call or visit us online at drycon.com. All right, congratulations to our winner tonight, Ed Seal from Woodlawn, Tennessee. Ed, you got a great, great package here that's going to get you out there and catch crappie, catfish, and panfish. You'll have a, a, something for a whole family to go out there and enjoy yourselves. And starting Saturday, this Saturday, the Middle Tennessee Crappie Club is going to go out of a lake of choice. You got to find out. You got to call Randy Clark at 970 433 0791 to get to find out where you're going to go because it goes from safe light till one so try that out then old hickory bass tournament trail is going to go out a long branch 
uh, ramp. That is Mike Bolin. You can contact him at 596-4582. That goes from 530 to 130. And then Sunday, you can come join us, uh, well, or, or hear about it, Music City Bass Anglers. We got 100 members right there. We're going to be headed to Cheatham Lake out of Ashland City Park, and I look forward to that each and every year. Uh, just to be with a bunch of the guys out there and join our, our up in the standings right now. So uh, root for us if you possibly can. Then Saturday, August 25th, we've got the Montgomery County Bow Hunters. It's got an all deer classic. That's a two day event. And uh, it's gonna be out the Hain, uh, Haines Bottoms. And then the Renegade Series Bass Tournament is gonna be out at Old Hickory at a Flippers. You can contact Rick Hensley at 4005030. That goes from Safe Life till three. And then Sunday, August 26th, uh, you've got the Old Hickory Bass Tournament, or Old Hickory Lake Bowman. He's gonna have their all deer shoot. That's out there, it shoots branch. And in the last part of the segment though, I wanna say, TJ, you're going to go. Gary Mason has his Legends of the Outdoors, and then it starts tomorrow night, or Saturday night. Saturday morning. I mean, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. And it's going to be where now? On the General Jackson at 8 o'clock. And it's $75 a ticket. Yes, for, sir. For, and then we have five brand new inductees right. into the Outdoor Legends of the Outdoors Hall of Fame. So great, great venue there. That uh, You can contact Gary Mason. has a great website. Contact mm -hmm. him through that. Or go to Legends of the Outdoors website, and that will also get you tickets to that. You can purchase them online there to be the general jack tj thank you so much for being on the Thanks show for having buddy. Me, buddy i appreciate, I appreciate it. all the, the 22 years of of working with hooks i knew you had to know a little something about hooks just a little and you carry what all different kinds of hooks at all times oh, yeah. because they all fit a different style of fishing exactly and we just got to tell our people out here you got to match your hook uh, to whatever bait you're using with and, and whatever fish you're going after. Exactly. And exactly. then that way it's going to make it much, much easier for you to bring that fish from point A to the boat. Because remember, if it's not in a boat and you can't take a picture of it, you might as well say you never even caught it. That's so right. let's stop all that and let's use the right kind of hooks. And, and so we appreciate it. Hey, guys and gals, I got to warn you. Please put those personal flotation devices on whenever you're out there on the on the lakes or river systems because we definitely want all of that to go away. No more fatalities out there. Let's wear a personal flotation device. We'll see you next week right here on Southern Woods Waters.